All right, can everyone hear me? All right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, looks like a few people are still jumping on. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We have, this is a first in a series of uh, ServiceNow Tech Talks. Um, this one particular is focused around investigative case management and how ServiceNow's app engine capabilities can support various different types of law enforcement agencies that have multiple point solutions um, and how they can then, excuse me, was there someone who had a question? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, yeah. so how, how the ServiceNow app engine can uh, support multiple law enforcement agencies to um, configure and build uh, their unique investigative processes, as well as provide a unified user experience uh, for each of those agencies and how it involves investigations with their, uh, their organizations, whether it's internal or external. Um, so my name is Steve Lee. I am an advisory solution consultant with the ServiceNow Federal team. Been with ServiceNow for about six years now um, in various different roles. Uh, on here with me is Mark. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Moyes, Solution Consultant, as well on the App Engine side of ServiceNow and working with Steve Lee on supporting uh, law enforcement agencies. And what we've seen is we're going to walk you through a couple of scenarios and demonstration of how we have worked with customers to configure the uh, workflow capabilities of ServiceNow with App Engine to manage the whole life cycle of bringing uh, people that have been uh, performed fraudulent act um, to, to get the, uh, why they are in the front of the investigation and manage the life cycle from getting the investigation started, uh, collecting the data and uh, starting an investigation if there is enough ground and then getting, making sure that all along the way that we are making the data flow through the organization. All right. So without getting, uh, just going to get started, um, the Health and Human Services uh, Office of um, Inspector General is fighting on a daily basis uh, for the health and safety of children of the HHS program. And they are really at the forefront of the opioid crisis as well. And they've been using ServiceNow for a couple of years now, and they've, be they've been producing impressive results. All right, so when we look at what they've done, the type of transformation that they have went through, like many organizations, um, they often look at ServiceNow as an IT platform, being able to manage IT incidents. But they quickly realized that everything also in investigation starts with an incident. It could be also named as a complaint or a tip. Some, there was also all kinds of events that happened that need to be looked at. So what they've done is that they started to look at the capabilities of the platform and the, the workflow capabilities, the ability to integrate with legacy systems, because this was one of the biggest impediments for them to actually transform and accelerate the rate of investigation. And so to help them with this challenge, they started to work with ServiceNow and a partner to look at moving to the cloud and really using a, a more modern development process, right? So when they, when they started it, they started to look at what are the different stages of the, the, the process that they work on on a day-to-day -day basis, from incidents to evaluating the data to collecting additional data to uh, making sure that there is enough information, there is note in the cases, to be able to make sure that there was enough ground to start an investigation and that also once the investigation is complete if there is enough ground to prosecute the, the individual or the businesses and so one of the challenges also is that when you talk about case investigative case management is that there is a variety of users to um to accommodate and they have different needs so from um investigators uh, field agents that need to have the data at their fingertips to attorneys and, and uh, that work in the different offices 
they have different needs at different time, but they need to work on a single platform. So using the ServiceNow single platform, single data model, they were able to leverage the capabilities out of the box and started to quickly build uh, applications. And they started small, quick, so being able, for example, to manage the incidents, uh, set up a hotline to manage the intake and the processing to make sure that they have no duplicate or reduce considerably the duplicate of incident. Because uh, like they said, there was all kinds of people that generate uh, incident or call the hotline and often there was no, not enough ground. So they want to make sure that the work is, is focused on the cases that have really be the, the highest propensity of being actual, an actual fraud or an abuse. So, and then they started into uh, managing, uh, building all the application for managing the investigation process. And one of the things that's pretty uh, neat about the ServiceNow architecture is the ability to what we call is uh, scope the application to make sure that only the, the people that have a need to know basis, um, they actually have access to the data at a certain point in time during the uh, life cycle. And so they also started to not only they needed to manage the work inside the organization, but there is also work that needs to be done and tracked inside um, uh, sub agency or components of the agency, but also uh, report to Congress, uh, be, make sure that they can reply to Congress inquiries um, on, a, on a timely basis. Steve? Thanks. So, in, in today's sessions, we're going to go through a number of discussion points and the demos. Um, two area of focus we're going to look at today is kind of that life of a law enforcement officer and the user experience they will be getting as when they use ServiceNow. The second portion will be focused around the investigative case structure and process. So when we look at a day in the life of a law enforcement officer, right? As part of protecting and serving the public, a lot of tasks need to be completed even before that officer or agent can focus on their critical or mission critical uh, incidents and investigations. So if we look through the lens of a law enforcement officer, right? We can catch a glimpse of where ServiceNow can help law enforcement agencies manage and complete their day-to-day -day tasks while accomplishing their mission as efficiently as possible. So we start bottom left in terms of collecting and analyzing data, right? Having a platform, a single platform and a flexible data model, right? To collect unstructured as well as structured data is gonna be critical. Right, that technology uh, proficiency portion, right? Having a system that is intuitive, right, and user friendly for those agents who, you know, might not be tech savvy, but more of a investigator background is going to be critical. And then understanding the use of weapons and tactics, knowing what equipment those agents have available to them, and knowing, you know, and being able to count on them to work in the is going to be critical. And then the last portion of it is really being able to study and identify changes in criminal patterns. So if we are looking at um, link analysis and some reporting, right, using our native machine learning and performance analytics and reporting and dashboards, right, to be able to um, provide them what the data they need to make the right decision at the right time. And then lastly, being able to make sure that each of the agents are healthy and are certified and qualified to be out in the field to do their job. Any questions? Okay, let's move on. All right. So Mark's gonna take you through these three typical use cases here um, as part of the demo um, he's about to go through right now. So the first portion is really around as we're talking about aligning, right, managing and tracking those critical equipment to those officers, right? And that kind of falls in line, making sure that when you go out into uh, the field as an agent or officer, that you know the equipment you have with you is dependable and reliable, right? And then the second portion is really looking at ensuring that agents and officers have the skills and knowledge they need to complete their mission, right? 
if there's training that they have to maintain or qualify, whether it's firearm proficiency or any other type of special um, operations training, we wanna make sure they have that and are qualified for it. And the last portion of it really is that um, user experience, having the data to go ahead and track and manage the life cycle, bringing fugitives to justice. Any questions? Yeah, and really the goal is to make sure that in order to, to be able to protect and serve, they need to be able, uh, agents need, and law enforcement officers need to make sure that they have the proper equipment, that they have the training in order to go in, in the field, right? So everything, we found that everything is connected and that every workflow touches another and another and making sure that they have the right data at the right time is um, really critical uh, when you have a couple, only uh, an instance to catch the bad guy, right? So one thing that we, we're going to walk you through is here, an application here that we can configure for an agency. And what you see here is actually a, an example of a, an exercise that we conduct with agencies on a regular basis. Because at the end of the day, even though everybody talks about incidents, investigation, prosecution, everybody has some variations of how their users want to work and how their workflows are a little bit different than others. So what we do is we have workshop with customers. We strive to uh, work with them to understand the life cycle and the day in the life of their agents, how they collaborate together and how they collaborate with others. So here's an example here. What you see is that this portal here, I'm connected as Johnny Pace, a law enforcement officer, and I can see right there all in the information about uh, my, my case, the cases that I'm working on. Um, for illustration purposes, what we have is we have uh, three portals, one for at the HQ level, one at the district level, and one for the officers. So if I look at the officers level, I have another view where what we've done is illustrated how ServiceNow is able to consolidate and integrate with third, third party systems of record because every agency has not only legacy, internal legacy systems, but they also have systems that they need to get data from or push data to, right? So as, as I'm Johnny Pace here, as I log in in the, in the start of my day, I can see all the critical information that I need to, to do my job. Not only I can see here, uh, ordered by color, the critical cases that I need to work on here, the fugitives that I need to track that I'm working on, I can see the equipment and the gear that I need to do my job. So if I look at one item here, I can go see my item. And if I, I'm in the field and I see that, hey, we've done some damage to the car, I can quickly report that directly using the ServiceNow capabilities out of the box, tracking items, tracking assets. Right? And then if I want to, um, directly request another item, I can go into the, uh, the catalog and, and look at other um, items that I can request. So here, for example, I'm going to look at the catalog and if um, there was another item here that I need, for example, a specific helmet, I have the ability to consolidate all the items that I, that I want to provide to the force, provide them a, an Amazon-like experience where it's really remove all the paperwork that we have to go through in order to order items and order the item and this going to directly request it. I can add additional information, but this is really more like a Amazon-like experience where I can uh, streamline that ordering process where there was an approval that's going to be generated and while it's the supervisor who's going to approve or synchronize. And I have the ability here using the case management capabilities of the platform to track all the different stages and tasks that need to be completed in order to request and approve this order. All right. So going back to the portal,
So I see my, the list of gear that I need to do my job. I can here interact with them and I can um, specify if one of them is missing damage and I can have a workflow. I can also see all the training that I need to perform and the certification that I need to keep track of. And I see, for example, these are the different ratings, the score that I got for the different trainings that I attended, the status, uh, this one recertification required. We know that because of COVID, some of the recertification was delayed. So I can go into, into those and to look at the status, um, reschedule them and look at the different training tasks that need to be completed. All right. And so this is the officer view of all the assets that I need, my training, my gear, and also the, the cases that I'm working on. So talking about cases, let's dive into Eric Fox, who um, escaped and is a critical case. All right. So Steve later is going to talk about the intake of the for going from the uh, incident or complaints intake. So here I'm really talking about the uh, making sure that we provide the best experience possible for an agent. And so the experience that you see here again can be tailored to suit the needs of of the force that you are responsible for. So what we have here is the ability to consolidate data from disparate uh, systems of record. So I have here the uh, court case ID that triggered that, um, that, um, that fugitive um, investigation and, and tracking. And I have the, the different stages and all the data that come from different systems. As a, a requirement from this agency was the ability to uh, find the data uh, more quickly and pinpoint because right now, uh, many agencies have multiple systems and they have to swivel chair between multiple systems to see the data. And even if to some, to some extent, they've been able to uh, navigate and have multiple, but the screen that they have today is are very um, convoluted. So for example, here, the experience that ServiceNow allows us to consolidate is if I wanted to see all the people here directly living into uh, our family members of this fugitive, I can directly click on the left navigation and it's bringing me directly into the contact page of the daughter of this fugitive. If I wanna look at a specific location, I don't have to click uh, three times in order to select the residence and then select the, the person inside that residence. I have all the data at one click. So I can see the son, I can see the cousin and so on. And I can see the arrest records. I can see the different um, type of charges arrest. I can see the activity on, on, the, on that case. I can see any attachment that, that is provided. And also I can see the different aliases that this fugitive uh, has assumed in the past. Right. So we made it very efficient to navigate that uh, set of data related to a case. Another area that's also very helpful is the ability for ServiceNow to expose connections between data. So I have uh, sometimes uh, we have information about uh, people that are connected to a, a person of interest, uh, such as this fugitive here, Eric Fox. We have the ability to um, retrieve, you know, for example, information about the web sheets, all of the OS, how they are connected. I can, this graph here helped me to visualize uh, potentially um, with a more uh, visually uh, attractive and more uh, easily uh, way to actually notice people that may be connected to a person based on uh, previous connections. So I can see here that this person, Billy Jack, is actually connected through that fugitive uh, through Jenny, uh, through Jenny, the fugitive fugitive's daughter. Right. So as I go and work on that investigation, I'm looking at the data. I have all the people that submit inf submit information. I have the ability to actually uh, add information to that to that case. I can directly here uh, say that I received tip that Eric Fox was spotted in uh, Spokane, Washington. 
Okay. So all of the information here, those notes are added to the, to the case. And some of the notes can be uh, vi made visible only to the team or to that jurisdiction or to other jurisdictions. So the um, uh, service now capability in terms of role based access allows you to make the information visible to whoever needs to know. All right. So at some point, like, I can receive information that um, fugitive was put it into another district. So what I need to do is actually to request a transfer. So I'm going to transfer that, that, that case to another district. And now ServiceNow is spinning off a workflow to route this approval to a supervisor. Right. So we submitted the transfer request for the Eastern District of Washington. All right. So here for illustration purpose, I'm leveraging the ability of uh, ServiceNow to impersonate users. This is only for illustration purposes. So I'm going to log in as Peter Magminen, the supervisor. And so Peter should have the request. I can see all the information about my district uh, as well. Um, let me see if the uh, Peter Macmillan. And let me see if uh, the case has been allotted to Peter or to Edward. Oh, no, I think it was Charles. So we're going to see uh, all the uh, the users involved into this case. Mark, I think it was Edward. Who you, uh, you think it was Edward? Yeah, I saw it under Edward's uh, okay. transfer. Oh, incoming transfer. I was looking on the uh, on the white side. I think that we moved this um, widget, and I was looking on the white side. I didn't see this request coming in, so it was there uh, from the beginning. So, as the supervisor here, uh, I can directly be prompted to approve or reject that transfer, and I'm going to approve it. And that transfer here can be also visible through a mobile interface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to log in onto my iPad. And I'm going to uh, work as another user, let me see. So he hasn't the case yet, but so what you see is that all of the information is also visible on the iPad. So if the agents want to um, have access to all the information, they want to take picture of, of, the, of the fugitive, they want to transfer the documentation, they want to take picture of evidence, and that evidence is going to be recorded directly to the case. Mark, I think you're going to have to go to Charles for this one. Uh, which one did you say? Charles Glazer. Uh, 
Yeah, he has it. Thank you for that. All right, so if I wanted to take a picture, for example, if I want to attach to, uh, to the case, uh, right there. I don't know where you are. Please turn on Wi-Fi, which will allow me to find you. <laughs> All right. Uh, So I can take a picture here. <laughs> and that picture is going to be attached to the case. So any type of information here is gonna be uh, directly recorded. Uh, now that let's say that I'm doing some investigation that I can see the fugitive and I can add additional um, act activity I was typing on my keyboard <laughs> instead of the iPad. But right there from the iPad, directly, what I can do is, let's say that now this fugitive needs to be apprehended. What I can do is that I need to have the proper uh, documentation. And so right there, I can request a warrant. And we can make available uh, any type of warrant um, or documents and generate any type of documents possible. I can submit this request. The uh, ServiceNet platform is now going to take the data that's necessary to generate that PDF and attach it, that document, to the, to the case. And what we're going to see is that that document is now going to be attached directly here. And I can click on the OS warrant, and I can analyze the document, was generated, and I can see all the information from the case was uh, appended into that PDF. All right. So what we saw is the uh, the full life cycle of I, I'm a law officer, law enforcement officer. I'm looking into my uh, day in the life portal. I'm looking into uh, all the assets that I need to, my cases. I can see uh, what so everything that's sorted by priority, by urgency. I have access to my assets, my and also my training. And then when I go into my my data. I can drill down and I can spin off a workflow based on the, the stage and the state of the assets or my training. I can request something that's missing. And when I look at the fugitive, I have all the data at my fingertips to be able to do my job. If I'm in the field, I can request a document. I can have document generated. I can take pictures and those pictures are associated to the case and recorded. Right. So if we go back to the presentation here, Now what we're going to do is look, Steve is going to show the different building blocks in the ServiceNow platform for investigative case management. Steve? Thanks, Mark. Yep. So in terms of the building blocks, right, where we look at ServiceNow and how we can help the investigative case management, right, we're going to look at three scenarios here, really the intake and the triaging of the different types of events, incidents, and leads or tips, right? Because we know, as we know, you know, incidents and events are not necessary uh, investigations. They can trigger investigations, right? So we'll keep that in mind as we go through a process. And then look at the different types of data points that we have that we can capture, having ability to have a very flexible data model that can be tailored to how your organization captures structured and unstructured data. And then we'll look at the workflows, right? The ability to go ahead and modify the workflows. So, you know, here, if you look at the slide here, the, the key focus here is that we know most law enforcement agencies have multiple silo systems that they have, they have to go and gather information. ServiceNow platform can consolidate and integrate those multiple systems, whether it's intelligence database shared internally or externally, a digital evidence management, or even uh, a regulatory body like electronic uh, electronic code and federal regulations um, framework, where we get all the specific federal regulations and policies and criminal codes um, 
that they have to arrest or they can charge um, criminals with. ServiceNow is not only able to provide a, that unified modern user experience, which you just saw in that demo, right? Our numerous native platform capabilities, such as the native mobile application, the machine learning, AI, um, also empowers law enforcement personnel to access the right information at the right time to make the right decisions. So, you know, we saw from that user experience, right? Behind that great user experience is a great workflow. So this next portion of the demo, will actually dive into the back end of it and how a, we intake information, right? Whether it's a tip or a lead, right? We triage it and then we will escalate it into a case and start an investigation from that. You know, we understand every organization out there handles investigations differently. Right, the workflows are going to vary and the data model, how they capture structured and unstructured data uh, is going to be different. So the ability to be agile and make changes and keep up with the criminals is going to be key here. Any questions? All right, let me share my screen. All right, so we'll start out here. Um, the people out there who use ServiceNow will know our, you know, our typical user service portal, right? That same concept can be applied here, right? Where we're looking at intaking and capturing information. Again, as we said earlier, right? Incidents and events are not investigations. Uh, investigations can be triggered from a number of internal, external sources, whether it's a whistleblower or a public complaint about fraud, right? Um, then incidents such as terrorist events, terrorist attacks, or accidents, right, can also trigger investigations. So that's what the concept of the service portal is going to provide, right? The ability to take in that information. So in this case here, you can see here, we're just going to submit a simple lead or tip. And currently right now, what we're seeing a trend out there is, you know, with this COVID vaccine, right, all different types of fraud schemes out there. So here's a good example here where I'm going to be a random individual, anonymous individual. I'm going to submit a actual lead or tip, right? You know, what this, what's a concern about this tip? When did it occur? What are some details? I can also add in individuals, organizations that I know are involved in this, right? And you can add in multiple ones. And again, this particular portal is fully configurable based on how you guys, uh, how the different agencies actually intake uh, information. Again, both structured and unstructured, right? So in this case here, we'll go ahead and submit this request, uh, sorry, to submit this lead or tip, right? We'll go ahead and submit it. The individual, if they choose to be anonymous or if they choose to be a registered internal user, will get a confirmation that their request, ha if they're, sorry, their lead or tip has been um, submitted. So in this case here, since we did it as anonymous, they'll get a confirmation and they'll go through and they can see the process. Again, a high level framework that we provide uh, that process across the top. So any questions? So now that the leader tip has been um, submitted, right? We'll kind of take on the persona of a um, internal user or analyst, right? That will go ahead and evaluate those different types of leads or tips. Um, as one of those individuals, right? I'm gonna go to my dashboard every day I log in and I'm starting to go through and review all these tips and decide and look at the conditions in which they should be escalated to a case or investigation. This is kind of where I'm gonna land. This will give me that 360 picture of what's going on right now in terms of investigations, in terms of cases, incidents, uh, or events, or tips that have been submitted. And it identifies for me what are the critical and high priority cases that I have to focus on. But it also kind of breaks down for me, you know, what, what am I seeing right now? Am I seeing a trend in counterfeiting? Am I seeing a trend in assaults, right? Am I seeing a, a trend increasing for thefts? And then the breakdown of those categories as well, right? So in this case here, let me go and take a look at the actual event or tip that was submitted. Right? So if I go ahead and open up and look at all the different open ones here, I can see there's a different status ones, uh, sorry, different tips that have been already entered 
And here's, in this case, it gives you an overview. I can go ahead and open that up. And keep in mind, this is what we call our workspace. So this one way of looking at the actual request that was submitted in or that tip that was submitted in. And it gives you a good understanding, again, what's going on, what was complained about, all the information that was submitted uh, externally from the individual, right? And then I can see once I go ahead and assign this particular ca uh, case out or event or tip out, I can, once it gets assigned, it will trigger that workflow. All right. Right. And all the information that we, that was submitted out on the, from the portal is accessible here through the record. You can see here those individuals, right, and the roles that were submitted on the requests, right, are all located here. I can see all the information about those uh, organizations. I can go ahead and open up those records, individual records about those um, organizations, and I continue to add in information about it. So as a part of my investigation, right, and follow up, I can go ahead and start to collect information about these individual organizations. I can do so again about the individuals involved as well. I can go ahead and search the multiple different databases to see if this individual is already known or is associated with any other uh, active investigations, right? And a good portion of that process, right? And that workflow, again, we're providing a out of box workflow that can be tailored to how you guys do investigations, right? And then we can go ahead and trigger a number of tasks. So as those tasks, are being assigned out and completed, I can go ahead and complete that task. And then once that task is complete, it will actually start to push and guide those people who, those, in, those analysts through the process itself. So if I'm gonna do a quick refresh here to see, are there any other tasks? So as part of my task, I'm validating, I'm verifying the, this tip. Right, I'm collecting any individuals, I'm sorry, information about those individuals. And then once I have all the information, right, we can put a layer where it can then go and request an approval, right? That extra layer where another set of eyes to review the data, review the tip, right? To make sure that again, it doesn't get passed on or we didn't miss something, right? So they can go ahead and assign an approval. In this case, I'm just, since I have admin rights, I'm just gonna go ahead and approve that. Um, leader tip. So once it's been approved, right, the individual analyst who is actually looking at the tip will then be able to say, okay, you know, based on this, we think it's credible, we can go ahead and refer this to a case, right? And referring to a case, we basically will, you know, create a case, which then is assigned to investigators, and then this particular event lead or tip, right, will close out because the analysts, right, based on security and based on a number of access controls, they don't necessarily need to understand or see that investigation, right? Having a closed loop and making sure that you, that investigative process is secure and no one's seeing the information is going to be critical and making sure when it comes time for prosecution that no one has tampered with the data or the information behind it is going to be critical. So in this case, we'll go ahead and refer it to a case. So the, again, automation kicks in, we go ahead and now the information has been created, a case has been generated. And as the analyst, this case is now gonna be closed, right? You can see here, and the information is provided back out to those individuals who are submitted and the full case history is, is provided right here in the activity history. So I'm gonna jump into back end a little bit and I'm gonna focus on really talking around the data model about this, right? as what we find within organizations, right? Everyone has different processes, different um, cases, different ways to escalate. But what we see as a commonality is that common data model, right? How an organization, law enforcement treats addresses, treats uh, locations, treats evidence, treats a organization, treats a person, what information they collect about those um, individual objects is going to be critical because in order to take advantage of our platform capabilities, such as the machine learning to kind of provide some analysis and give you some suggestions, right? We need to be able to take the data that's collected, whether it's unstructured or structured, 
and put it into a nice framework so that you can then start to see the relationship between those different um, objects or those um, people. And really starting to build the, the basis of that link analysis. So a good example here, we try and take a look at the persons of interest, right? This is a, a typical what we see as a people object, right? We can look at Mark. You know, here's all the information that we start to collect about Mark. You know, his information, um, his age, all the typical information. Again, this can be configured to collect whatever information you want to collect, right? Whether it's about a person or organization um, or a um, asset, such as a vehicle or plane or boat. So in this case here, Mark here is a known individual. We have some information about him. We also have information about aliases he's used. And this kind of goes back to looking at the way that user experience that Mark downloaded earlier, right? We can see any previous addresses he's lived at, right? And then when we open up those individual addresses, right, we can add or update more information as we need it. And again, this is all controlled through our access controls. You know, in some cases we can say, okay, you want Mark is associated. We found out that Mark is associated with you know, medical, med, med, med plus medical, right? And we can go ahead and make that build that association with them. Oh, did I save it? Sorry. Right. We can then start to build the association. Now we're actually going ahead and start to build the relationship between those objects within our common data model. And again, being able to have that flexible data model is going to be critical here. So we can do this likewise, the same thing. If we find out and pull records from DMV, his driver's license, what vehicle he owned, if he owns boats, we can pull all that information here. We can also add and put notes in here about Mark or, or in, the, in certain cases, his alias, if we find information about this alias as well. Right, but the critical thing here, as we said, right, leads and incidents and events aren't necessarily the uh, investigation right however they can lead to investigations so in in certain cases we get leads and tips from public there's also incidents as i said earlier right such as terrorist attacks or accidents that we can trigger investigation but really the critical portion is once you take those and you triage those leads and tips and incidents and escalate to a case Right now we can go ahead and look and open those cases. All right, and we can pull information in about those individual cases that are secure and only investigators and case managers are have access to. And again, across the top, just like you would have, and again, I'm back on the back end on legacy UI, but this is, would be a very similar look and feel if we were looking at from a workspace. Right, it's the same look and feel. You have the process across the top information. I just, out of personal preference, I prefer this user experience, right? So in this case here, if we're looking at it, we have the process, and again, a high level framework process, and it can be completely tailored to your organization, how it does uh, investigations. You know, we'll have a, we have the concept of a case manager who kind of reviews and looks at overall the cases. And then we have individual investigators that we can assign to this request. And if there are a team of investigators, whether it's internal or external, we can go ahead and assign those individuals as well. But once we start to assign those investigators and assign these different um, cases out, right, it will again trigger those workflows. So we can go ahead, let me switch views real quick to back to default. So the nice part about it is, you know, when we talked about integrations earlier, right? You know, in certain cases, when you start to do investigation and you have to come up with charges, right? We talked about the electronic um, code and federal regulations are so integrating with those databases, so we can start to pull down some of those criminal codes on how we want to charge or what type of investigations we want to lead. So in this case here, if we're looking at forward and counterfeiting, all right, we can pull that particular classification out, it'll pull out some default information that is provided, right, that we integrate and pull that down. We can go ahead and update the priorities, right? We can say, yeah, this is critical, and we'll go ahead and make those changes. But also, again, we saw, right, that lead and tip 
that's how this case got started, right? We can go ahead and see that, hey, yeah, in this case, because Alex was assigned this particular case, it triggered a workflow. And now his first task as starting this investigation is to go ahead and collect and consolidate all information about this. So for the sake of this demo, I'll just go ahead and say it's been complete. He's done that. He's consolidated. He's collected information. He's validated all the information. Right. It will go ahead and again, you can see the workflow and how a typical workflow that can be configured. In this case, we just did a very generic one, right? We'll go ahead and it looks like there's some additional tasks there we have to do. Um, we'll go ahead and complete those tasks. Right. So now what happens is as he's completing it, he's providing information. He's saying, you know, yes. You know, this is definitely a uh, true case. Let's, you know, prosecute, right? Whatever you want to put in about this case, we can go ahead. But also in the case here now, what we see is the workflow triggered approver. So all those case managers that we signed earlier, right, will now have a chance to validate to make sure the investigation was completed, right? It was thorough, that it followed a standardized process, right? Each case was treated, you know, exactly the same, right? And they'll go ahead, they can eject, reject or approve those actual, the actual case. So once it gets approved, right, it can go ahead and be um, pushed to a prosecution. So in some cases, when we're talking about integration to other system, it can be sent over to DA's office, can sent over to another system or another organization that is particularly going to be responsible for um, the prosecution aspect. And as part of those packages that get sent over there, all the information that is associated that we've collected as part of that flexible data model from the very beginning all the way to the closure of this case can be automatically sent to them and all of the information can be audited and there's a full trail of all this different information that we collected over time will be able to be sent over to them. So yeah. any questions? No, I just wanted to add that we are more and more working with agencies that want to bridge the gap between the investigation side and the prosecution side because very often they have each uh, very different applications that they use. I know that you know lawyers like to work with paper. So, like Steve said, we can generate the paperwork and and package all the data into one one single asset. But what we what um, we can do, and what other agencies are interested in, is the ability to work on a single platform, use the same data, and have connections between the data to avoid duplicating data, to avoid uh, fat fingering the data. Um, we had agency that when they had typos during the investigation, there were some problems during the prosecution because there was a mismatch between the, the regulations and the charges. So there was some ability here to use a single platform to have just one single view of the data and making sure that you actually speed up the process and avoid all the paperwork back and forth. So at this point, we'll, you know, we'll open up for any questions or discussions that you guys might have. So please feel free. So for anyone that wants to discuss further, how ServiceNow App Engine can support investigative case management. Uh, I, I just typed our email address in the chat. Uh, Steve and I would be uh, really glad to have further discussions. We can also look into the, the life cycle of uh, it's very specific to your own agency. And um, for internal, external um, investigations, uh, so feel free to reach out to us. We'd be um, very excited to, uh, to work together. Any specific questions around, you know, from the user experience perspective, from uh, the data, from the um, the platform, from the the app engine, from the investigation side? Any any specific question?
So if you want to have your question, you know, ask your question privately. So again, reach out to, to us. Um, again, I'm going to share our uh, contact information here. And so Steve Lee and, and myself would be um, very interested to have further discussions around your, your specific use case and how we can help you um, speed up investigations, um, improve the different workflows during the whole life cycle of bringing people to justice. I know that it's hard to share questions uh, in front of everybody, especially when we talk 